Hello everyone, welcome to Lawrence Plays Factorio Space Exploration with Crastorio 2 where I'm going to give you another summary of what was going on in the last stream where we've been, um, we've been basically working on lots of the resources that we want to supply to the factory. And so, let's start out here on Agnea, where I've made, um, I've made a bit of a mess, if I'm being honest with you. <laughs> yes, so we've got, uh, we had this, 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 a system over here that would been, again, was rather out of date. So it was, it was running, but not as quickly as I would like it to. So over here, we've got a, tra a, system, a train system that brings in lots and lots of the, uh, the vulcanite core chunks. And then they're being fed out on belts over to here. And then they, where they were being crushed down, pulverized down in, in, in the, in the crushers along here. Then pulverized again to get the vulcanite out. And then that was corked and so on into, into vulcanite. So that was a, a generally a nice idea. And it was all basically working, but it was a bit slow. We had we got two red belts coming out here, and it was it was getting through both the two red belts, and that was I mean that was okay, but I wanted to get through I wanted to use it up a bit faster. So my plan is to upgrade all of this to blue belts, and that means that this system in the middle needed to be upgraded. So I spent some time in the blueprint editor building this. Uh, here we have at the moment we have one, two, three, four uh, blue belts going in. So we'll try and upgrade it that far and see see, see how uh, well it does at keeping up. And this means that we're getting out well that's slightly less than a red a blue belt there and there and there and there and there and there. And there. So we're getting out quite a lot of the um, of the vulcanite now and also a load of pyroflux as well, which will then need to be passed down. Uh, this isn't actually this isn't quite going to work, but anyway, it needs to be passed down to here to go in with the with the rest of the core chunk processing that's going on down here. And this will allow us to then feed out all of the uh, all of the stuff that's all of the sort of the standard byproducts. So we've got stone and coal uh, and copper and coal and rare metals and so on, and also the liquid. So we're going to need to put have a sort of have a barreling plant over here somewhere. So this isn't quite finished, but this was a sort of a yeah, this will do. This will give me an idea of what I want. I'm also going to need to pull out the iron ore from here make, to make it into steel. I'm going to need a couple of greenhouses to grow the wood for that as well, um, and then some and a machine to make the barrels, and then uh, some machines to put the uh, the pyroflux the uh, the uh, and, and the oil into bar into barrels. I'm also going to want to have some um, some vents, some flare stacks for getting rid of the water and the mineral mineral water because we've decided there's no point in shipping them back to Norvis. Um, they're, they're, they're basically free anyway. Although actually no, I'll just feed the water into the into the water systems on Agnea because we are using up water over there. So we'll yeah we'll, we'll use that up, but we'll also we'll but we'll just vent off the mineral water because we don't have any any great use any good uses for that. The other two we decided are valuable enough that we're going to barrel them and then they can just all be chucked in the spaceship. But there's quite a lot of building required to get that up and working. And so the first step of this is to rip up all of this stuff around here and get the uh, get remove the old buildings and dump enormous amounts of stuff into the warehouses of shame over here. So there's going to be loads and loads of vulcanite stuff over here that needs to be gathered up and put into put into machines as appropriate. And um, but then I can and get it processing the core chunks that are coming through a bit more a, a lot more quickly. I mean it's going to be probably about three times as fast. So I don't know if the train system is going to be able to keep up with that. I might need to put in some upgrades, maybe some faster inserters here to unload the trains, more trains, more core mines, all of that sort of good stuff and we'll get we'll get all of that implemented and that's that shouldn't be too hard unfortunately i was my, my plan was to try and leave all of these machines over here running so that we didn't run out of all of the um of, of the vulcanite over on norvis while we're waiting for the, the systems to unload unfortunately i've broken the uh the, the petroleum gas pipe down here because i basically because i just went through here and and ripped it all out uh with the with the deconstruction planner without paying enough attention to what's actually required so if i could put this through here like this then at least once these get placed, it'll start working again. Um, I'll probably have to pull it up once I get it, come in and start doing the actual building. But at least while I'm getting everything together and put and, and trying to sort my my um, all the supplies out at the other end, this will keep running and we'll have a um, a ready supply of vulcanite coming through. Because at the moment, as you can see, it stopped, and stopped is not the correct amount of vulcanite to be producing. Uh, it's going to take the bots a while to pick all of this up, though, because unfortunately, I, I I did I cut off the input and then waited for it to stop. But despite that, there's still quite a lot of stuff. There's still a lot of the vulcanite um, the various left stages through here that need to be disposed of. It's yeah, there's a lot of a lot of bits and pieces that that need to, need to be got rid of and put and, and sorted out and put into the appropriate places that haven't been yet. I did make a bit of a start on the on the tidying up. So down here, I've put in, I've, I've updated the filters on these warehouses. So we're now taking out all the different things that can be recycled in by the um, by by the other end in in the uh, Norv Norvian system are being automatically pulled out. And there was a lot of back backlog on this belt, but it has now got through all of that. It's all been fed out and put into the into the trains to get be taken up by the by the spaceships. So it's made a, that's made a big improvement on it. Um, but there's still there's going to be even more stuff in here now that we've done all this deconstruction. So we're there, I'm gonna I think I'll do the tidying up a bit more manually next time. But also then maybe I'll just dump absolutely everything out and just take it away in the spaceship like Mark does and have it just dumped onto the uh, in, into the system over there to be sorted out at the other end. At least things that we actually use we can do that with. And so over in Norbit I've been 
getting prepared to head over and set up the, all those new all, all the new systems that we, you see here in the in the in the in the blueprint viewer. Um, and so I've been loading up my, uh, my my spaceship over here with all the bits and pieces I need. I think I've got to the point of having pretty much everything. So in here, I've got some extra green belts because I want to upgrade all of the stations to load and unload more quickly. I've got all the bits and pieces here needed to make. This is this looks like I don't, I don't know what this is. Oh, no, no, we're not quite all the bits. We're short of pipes, which is annoying. But other than that, we've got all the bits in here we need for a pulverizing system. I, I took out the pulverizers and a load of the belts because I, I was worried they were going to fill up the uh, the chest. So they're all in here. Uh, I've got a load of extra rails so I can go out and build some more uh, core mines. I should have some more core mines in here. Basically, I've tried to get everything together that I'm going to need in order to do that building. So next next stream, I'm going to be heading out to Agnea once again to spend a little while out there rebuilding all of this stuff and getting it working much, much faster on a, on a bigger scale and generally better. Back on Norvis, Tristan has noticed that a lot of these um, core mining drills in the in the southwest haven't had their um, didn't have their, their their filters put in properly. So you can see this one we've got this big red cloud of pollution coming out from this core mine here, and the same here, and I think probably the same here as well. There's also some coming from over here, but this is the uh, this is making the cables, um, and hopefully we'll be able to sort that out some some way. And so he's run um, the, the the belts with all the filters on and now coming all the way down here uh, to go out to all of these uh, core mines to allow them to be cleaned out cleaned up again properly like that and then and then running back out again so these are a bit a little bit ridiculous um, <laughs> and they are currently still filling up I think yeah so we've got another one down here for that one if we look over here we'll see that these, these these ridiculous ridiculous belts still still currently gradually filling up along here now it might be I feel like it might be worth putting in a few extra pollution scrubbers in these areas because this has got a bit out of control we've still got pollution coming from up here and this area isn't really being cleaned up so I guess actually what should happen here is another belt should be put out from here that goes round here and then comes back in and joins in over here somewhere and then there's loads of pollution scrubbers around there uh, rather than uh, ra rather than dealing with it further away but uh, yes that, that should probably be done but yeah Tristan has put in some crazy crazy long belts that are going down to all of the uh, all of the core miners and making sure that they're, they're that they're cleaning up after themselves a bit better and um, and not and not polluting the the, the the area as much now and it's not the end of the world if they do because we do have laser turrets everywhere now so we should be able to defeat any biters that do come in and most of our pollution cloud is inside the walls this bit isn't but that's from this mine that we've dealt with so we're kind of okay, but it would be nice if it was a bit cleaner and we sorted things out a bit better. Tristan has continued with bringing in more inputs into Njord, so we should in theory have enough of absolutely everything, with the possible exception of the uh, of the actual Holmenite itself. Um, and so, yes, there should be lots and lots of Holmen being produced. Um, as we've seen from the uh, from the graphs on Norvis each time I look at it, it doesn't seem to actually be enough, but hopefully we'll be able to speed it up somehow. This belt doesn't seem to be flowing quite as quickly as it should. All these machines have gone, have gone, have gone yellow. That's not meant to happen. So this is this is full on the output. This is, and this machine is running. I, yeah, I don't know why. I don't know why there seems to be so much more on this particular belt than the other ones. However, they are. I was going to say all the inputs are fed from a uh, from a, a balancer here. So it actually doesn't matter if this belt does fill up. It just machine. Oh, it's probably because this machine is running faster because it's right at the top of a belt. Uh, maybe this belt is over overly full as well. I don't know. But anyway, the holmium powder is still being pushed through at full speed, so it probably doesn't really matter. Um, we we aren't we aren't wasting any of the input, even if the belt is a little bit clogged up here and there's and there's a little bit cash in these machines. So it doesn't really matter. Uh, the holmium is being produced as quickly as it can be. There's just a bit of an incidental buffer in there. Um, I guess the way to improve this further would be a rather it would be a rather major up, upheaval, but it would be to rip out all of these chemical plants down the middle here and replace them with the advanced chemical plants, partly because they're quicker, but mostly because we'd be able to put more um, productivity modules in them and therefore get an extra sort of 10% out that way. Um, over here we are using the standard uh, industrial furnaces, but upgrading these to um, advanced furnaces, it would save a little bit of space because they're faster, but it wouldn't actually allow us to put any more productivity modules in, so there's no real advantage to that. We could put in better um, beacons in here, but again, that wouldn't really help a great deal. The only way we can actually increase the uh, the supply of holmium coming out for the amount of holmenite that's going in is going to be by putting in, well, potentially we could put in higher tier uh, productivity modules, but that's expensive. The most effective way would be to upgrade these to the uh, the better chemical plants allowing us to put more productivity modules in them and then probably better speed beacons as well better beacons allowing these to go even faster and then we wouldn't have to put in as many higher tier productivity modules in order to get the boost out of, uh, of it um, it would be it would help but it probably wouldn't be an in absolutely enormous increase 
on Kothar, Mike has finished off the improvements we were talking about last time. So we've now got the um, we've got the mines feeding into the crushers down here, as you can see, like this, and then the crushed iridite being fed out into a warehouse here. And but now he's put in the the uh, the sand stations over here, and more importantly, the other end. I think this is the, this is the bit that's actually new. He's put in a sand drop-off station over here. So the sand, when, when, when one of those stations finally fills up, a, a train can come over, drop off the sand here. It can be fed up here and go into this into this warehouse where, as you can see, we've got the uh, circuit-controlled inputs on here and a, a no circuit control here. So this one will be a priority. These will be stopped when there's a certain amount in there. And that means that this is this using up the sand from the mines will be the top priority. And we can, we can, we can use that to then make all of the later bits and pieces that are needed for the, uh, for the iridium processing. He's also increased the amount of rare metals being brought out because we've discovered that iridium production is rather hungry on rare metal and mineral water consumption. So over here, as you can see, we've got the machines that are making the nitric acid. They're pulling in mineral water from down here from this completely empty pipe. That is the pro there's a problem there. Um, and also the rare metals from the belts coming in here. Now, currently, we're bringing both of these over in the spaceship. And Mike has done some maths into these on, on stream, which is very brave, and come up with some numbers. So for every stack of rare metals we bring in, you can make a certain amount of nitric acid which then gets passed on to make see, the uh, iridium powder over here and then that gets turned into the blast cake and then and that gets turned into the uh, in, into the ingots and it turns out that when that when it all runs through if you don't have any productivity modules in then you'd be making about two and a half stacks of iridium ingots for each stack of rare metal so that's okay we can bring out as long as the spaceship brings out as much rare metal as it takes out it takes iridium away then we're going to gradually stockpile more and more of it on this planet and so we can then we can use that to have control keep control over it and make sure we don't get to don't get a ridiculous amount and with the existing productivity three modules we've got in here that gets us an extra 2.82 times multiplier on the amount of output we get for the amount of input. So that means we're getting seven stacks of ingot out for every stack of rare metal. So that's not a problem. More problematic, unfortunately, is the mineral water. Because in the spaceship, we have one tank for the mineral for bringing mineral water out, and then two warehouses for bringing out the, the rare metals and more importantly taking the iridium back. So the hope is that from this one tank of 200,000 mineral water, we're going to be able to make 1,024 stacks in order to fill up these two warehouses. And currently that doesn't seem to be working quite as nicely as we would like. And looking at the numbers, we can see that if we, as we, as if we run all that through, this one tank of mineral water would produce 200 stacks of iridium. And obviously, given we're trying to make 1,024, that's not remotely enough, so there's a problem there. However, we've gone in and we've put in the productivity modules on the ground, as you saw. And so with productivity 3, as I said, you get a 2.82 times multiplier. So that means we can produce 565 stacks of ingots per tank of mineral water that we bring over. And so that would be enough to fill up one of the warehouses. And so that's... I mean, it's a start, I suppose. It's significantly better than it is without the ingots, but it's not going to fill up the spaceship and keep that satisfied. However, we've worked out that if we take some of those tier 6 productivity modules we were talking about before, and if we put those in throughout the entire system, then that brings it up to 1,059 stacks of ingots per uh, tank of mineral water, and that is going to be enough to fill up the spaceship. So potentially, one way we could fix this would be to bring out the um, would be to upgrade the modules in basically at least all of the machines that are dealing with the mineral water. So that means these the uh, chemical plants down here that are producing the nitric acid, um, then the machines here that are making the powder and the blast cakes and the um, and the ingots over here. We don't need to upgrade the ones in the pulverizers, although, I mean, we could if we wanted to, but that's that's not vital. But the other ones would need to be upgraded all the way through in order to allow us to produce en enough ingots to fill up the spaceship. At some point, there'll probably be a certain amount of junk and scrap and other things coming being taken away from this planet as well. But at the moment, uh, Mike has been turning all of that into other things. He's got a, a bus set up down here on Kothar, which is making various machines and things. And so all of his uh, all of his copper and iron and so on in, in, is being fed in down here to be turned into other, other useful things that may or may not be required for upgrading machines out here, rather than rather than doing what the rest of us have been doing and just bringing them out from, um, from, from, uh, from Norvis with us in our spaceships. So Yes, it's nice to have all of these bits and pieces here and could be incredibly useful when something needs to be built, but that does mean that a lot of the miscellanea has been stockpiled on this planet and has not been put into the spaceship and therefore has not been taking up extra space in there. So there are a few different possible solutions in here. Uh, one would be to put in a, a second tank to bring out twice as much mineral water. One would be to upgrade all of the productivity modules. Another would be to just put in more miscellaneous junk and tell the ship to depart when it's got a certain amount of iridium in it. And we'll leave it up to Mike to choose which one of these methods he thinks would be the best one for his, uh, his his system. I do notice that production seems to have stopped though, and why is that? But that's because we've run out of enriched vulcanite. Oh. 
Okay, that's my fault. So I think we haven't... Uh, yes, we ha we were shipping the Enriched Vulcanite over by Delivery Cannon. And I ripped out all of the Delivery Cannons uh, from Agnea as part of my tidying up. Okay, I, um, I think I owe Mike an apology. Uh, <laughs> and I need to find a way to start shipping the Enriched Vulcanite from Agnea to Kothar. I suspect it's going to be a case of put some of it in the Vulcanite ship. Um... But try and have some sort of cunning system of levers and pulleys that make sure we don't end up with too much of it at the other end. Uh, but we don't end up with too little of it at the other end either. Oh dear, this is going to be horrible. And, even worse than that, this is going to be another thing that Mike has to bring over in his spaceship that's going to take up valuable rare metal space. We're going to need to do some maths here and work out whether this is actually going to work as well. I think it still will, because I think there's enough productivity boost going in here. And hopefully, sufficiently small amounts of the... Um, enriched vulcanite being used. I don't know how much is, how much does it actually use. It uses one for every 20 powder in order to make four blast cakes. <sighs> this is going to be this is this is going to be problematic. Uh, we'll have to have a look into this, um, but it looks like I have inadvertently completely broken uh, the system over here. In the short term, I think I'll just set the delivery cannons back up again because I have an enormous number of delivery cannon capsules, so I can just start churning through those. But yeah, oops. Sorry about that, Mike. I've um yeah, I I forgot that was a thing when I started ripping everything up. Let's move swiftly on to Big Rid, where uh, Mark has put in a stone mine over here <laughs> that is now providing the stone that is needed for all of the all of the intermediate steps of the uh, of producing the, um, the the Vita of everything. I mentioned there was a shortage last week, and Mark has gone in and fixed it by just dropping in a mine because there is loads of stone on this planet. I, I how, how big is that patch? That patch is 12 million. Okay, I think that's probably going to be okay for quite a long time, and if it isn't, then there's an, there's probably more patches around as well. There's another 7 million over there, and, 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 and 10 million up there, and so on. So, yeah, I think the stone is probably going to be alright. More excitingly, Mark has upgraded a couple of the, uh, the, the the more difficult stages of the Vita production to use tier six productivity modules. So these are one of some of the the, the few that I was, I was talking about in um, in the last video, where we've made a relatively small number of them, and we've decided that yes, the Vita products are under sufficiently high demand and sufficiently expensive and difficult to make that it's worth putting some of the tier sixes in here. So now you can see we've got we've got the four tier sixes in the in the one sole lone machine that is making the uh, the Vitalic epoxy, and also over here in the final. Um, centrifuges that are making the vitalic reagent, the dark green bottles anyway, because as you can see that's the one we seem to be particularly short of at the moment. They're, they're trickling through but they're not being made at the rate we would like them to be I guess, uh, although we are we are filling up a buffer over here. Both this, this belt and this belt seem to be full. So we're in quite a good position with those. In fact, looking up here, we do seem to have enough of all of the Vita products at the moment. There's there's plenty of each of those being trying to be trying to be fed through into here to go into the sushi system that Mark set up. And I touched on this um, in in detail uh, quite a long time ago when Mark first set it up. But essentially, what it does is at the other end in the in the space station, there is a warehouse and a combinator saying we would like to have so much of each of these different things. And then we've got a system that counts them in at this end and counts them out at the other end and tries to keep the number in the system in total to the to the right number. So so over here we've got the, these these readers along here are counting counting them into the system and they'll uh, and they'll adjust the uh, the memory cell over here, which as you can see currently says we have the right number of presumably that's the right number of everything because otherwise these would be feeding stuff through. Yeah. So if we look, if we take the Vitalic reagent for example, that's the dark green bottles here. It's saying feed them through if there's less than twelve thousand. Over here we are seeing twelve thousand of them, so they're not being fed in. That means we know that there's twelve thousand of them somewhere in the system. Uh, and so that's that's okay. And the idea of this is it's to get around the problem you have with spaceships, where the, when the spaceship departs, you don't know what's in it, it unless you put a transmitter in it, but, but that's going a bit too far. Uh, you don't know what's in the spaceship, you don't know what's in the warehouses, you don't know what's on the belts, you don't know what's in all of the, sort of the logistic systems that's passing it through. But if you do this, if you count it in and you count it out at the other end, then you know how much of it is currently in transit and, and where, um, and therefore how much more you need to feed in to keep the system satisfied. And so if there's ever any shortages, all we need to do is increase the numbers over here, and that will increase the amount of each of these um, vitalic products that are in, in the system. And so at the other end, they're all dumped out into the warehouse here, and this is included in the, in the 12,000 or whatever that we were seeing, and then fed up along here, and I believe... Oh no, these are just keeping the warehouse at the right level, and then they're counted out from here. So between the, in these warehouses, there should be 12,000 of them. There's 8,000, 
and then there's and then another almost 4,000 in here, and then a smattering on the belt in the middle. So that probably adds up in total, with with rounding errors excluded. That probably does add up to the 12,000 that we're expecting. And then they're counted out when they're put into the train and taken off to, to wherever they're going. And then these are all these numbers. These, all these numbers are then fed back to the other end. Now this system is great as long as you don't have a power cut. If you have a power cut anywhere, then it'll lose track of what's been fed in and fed out, and uh, and that causes problems. And I think that's what um, Mark has been fixing. He's been trying to sort sort out some of those problems. And also down here, we've got a load of barrels of vitalic acid and some um, core chunks that need to be counted into the system and there's another counting into the system system counting into the system tron here so we can then once we start to run a bit low on on these two things we can start feeding them in here and and filling uh, yes granted filling up this warehouse a bit but never mind now over here it looks like we should have some trains coming in to take stuff away up oh, here is one just a bang on time that's some, that's some excellent timing and this takes away all of the all of the scrap you've seen this sort of thing before so so i won't go into it in too much detail down on Norvis, I was getting quite worried about the supply of copper ore, because copper tends to be a thing that you get through enormous quantities of, and our only real supply, well we have we have the steady stream that's coming out of the, uh, the core mining here, as you can see that's being fed through, that's great, we've got, we've got quite a lot of it from there, um, and we do have a couple of copper mines scattered around the, uh, around the, um, the universe somewhere, there's, I, I, I can never find them because they're, they're, they're small and mostly plundered by this point. Um, like this one, and that this isn't capable of producing copper at a particularly high rate. Now it does seem to be enough for what we're getting through at the moment. We have um, we filled up all the, we have filled up all the warehouses here, and we have a train that's that's completely full. But it was worrying me, and I suspect part of the reason this has been able to catch up and fill up is because I dropped in a couple of extra copper mines, uh, which I can't find. Yes, here's one. Here's one of them over here on a decent six and a half million patch. It's loaded up over here with twenty five thousand of it, and the train's gone. Goodness knows how many times. And then a second one down here because this was in a convenient place. Another six million down here. And so I did a bit of thinking about this because ideally what we would like to do is have an equivalent of what we got over here on Oliran where we've got a cup where we we find a copper primary and we start digging up copper or core chunks and feeding them in and crushing them down to get lots and lots of copper. Now obviously this is this is iron and this is working love this is working absolutely brilliantly for iron. Um, so we wanted to do the same for copper. But there aren't any copper primaries in our solar system. If we have a look through um, all the planets of Kalidus we can see that we've got the, the vulcanite, and we've got a, a, a generic vanilla, we've got oil, we've got um, cryonite, we've got another vulcanite, and so on, all the way down here. But none of these, none of these are copper. And so that's cool, that's, a, that's, a, that's, that's in a different, a different solar system. So that's, that's the problem. And we actually, uh, so I, we came up with, we had, I had a bit of a think about this, and I came up with three possible solutions. The first one was just build out some more mines on Norvis, and that, I mean, that works, you, you, you've seen that, they're, they're, they're working, but there's only 12 million across those two patches, which isn't a huge amount. The second one was have a look through all of the other planets and try and find any others that have got decent patches of copper on them. Uh, Njord's not too bad. Um, it's got the it's got these um, eight million, seven million, fourteen million, nine, ten million, and so on around. They're, they're not bad patches, but they're but if we did, but we, it'd be fairly it'd be a quite a manual effort going out, putting in putting in drills on all these patches, shipping it out. We'd have to just maybe have a second spaceship to handle all of that, and it's it's not it's not quite ideal. So. Yeah, that's not that's not great. That's option one and a half. Option two was to go out to Kalidas Asteroid Belt one, and because this one does have a certain amount of copper on it, and again the patches are these are just normal copper patches, so they're non-infinite, but they're quite big. There's 32 million there, 17 million there, 26 million there. So that's already. I mean, any one of these patches is bigger, significantly bigger than the two I built, the two I, I tapped on Norvis. We've got another five million. Okay, that's not very big. Thirty-three million there, and, and another eight million just off to the side of it, and then another thirty-four million over here. So it'd be quite, it'd be relatively straightforward to run a, a train spine along the middle of this asteroid belt, have mined on as many of these patches as is required, and then another spaceship that comes into here and just fills up with nothing but copper. Uh, that would be very, very easy to do. We'd have it solar powered, that sort of thing. Um, but it would mean setting up another spaceship, and I got a little bit lazy and, 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 and didn't do that. I just went for building the copper mines on Norvis. But I think the next step is probably going to be to tap the, these patches, because they're so, so big, and it'd be relatively easy. And if we put the spaceship in here next to these two, because there's 40 million here, um, then we could just not bother to expand from here for quite a while. Uh, that'd probably be enough. The only problem with the, uh, the deep space patches is they tend to be they tend to be relatively small for the amount of copper that's in or the amount of the ore that's in them so they're really really deep in that you get huge amounts of of, res of the resource in them like any any one square in here has 20,000 in it for example um, 
but you can't set up all that many mining drills on it, especially this one because there's beryllium off to the side of it here and that's going to just cause problems. So yeah, I wouldn't be able to fit quite as many drills on here as I would want. Now, I could possibly compensate for that by using higher tiers of mining drills. We could use the, the electric, we've got the Mark IIs, we, we haven't actually, we haven't developed the Mark Threes yet. Use the big mining drills, that probably wouldn't help either. Um, I could put productivity modules in them, I could put speed mod. I think, yes, you can put productivity modules in drills in space, I think. I could put speed modules in them, so they pull it out faster at the consumption, the, the, uh, because they'd use, more, but they'd use more power, but that's fine, we, we, we're in space, we can put down solar panels, not a problem. So there are ways and ways around all of that, but it's not quite as ideal. So secret option number three was do some um, deep, was do some targeted zone discovery, so we did that, and that's when you go into the Informatron and you say, I would like to specifically scan for copper ore. And then the next few um, zone discovery researches you do with the uh, with the astroscience, you would then specifically target finding copper primaries. And so we did that, and we were successful. We found these five. Two of them are asteroid fields, which is, non which is not ideal, because I think if we went out to those, we wouldn't be able to set up core mines because they're asteroid fields. It would just be, there would just be some enormous patches of copper on them. A bit like the asteroid, but Khalid's asteroid belt one, it's a beryl primary, but it still has copper. So it would have massive quantities of copper, but you'd still have to do it the traditional mining way. Or we could go to Charon, Naden, Ch Chodon, or Regis, and uh, and start picking and, and pull it pull it out from those planets. The problem is these planets are all in different solar systems, which means it takes a lot more fuel to get to them. But after a little bit of a look, we, I, I found that um, that Regis is in a, is only twenty one thousand delta v away, so that's relatively close. It's a copper primary. It's got a pyramid, so we'll probably want to go there at some point anyway. And it's in the Capellus system. And if we look, take a look at the map, we can see that Capellus is basically our next door neighbour. So Kalidus and Capellus over here. So it would actually be relatively straightforward to send a, a deep space spaceship over here. We'd have to build up something that was able to power itself in deep space. So that means it would have a built-in nuclear reactor or a, um, or, a, or a beam receiver or something like that. The, but these are both certainly possibilities. We can do that. It's not, it's not impossible. I did it in my 0.5 run. And it's really close by. So we could just nip over to Capellus and go to uh, Regis and I think when we looked at Regis and we reckon that because it's only got 44% solar that means it's probably quite a long way out from the sun and therefore wouldn't take too long to fly from here to get to the planet. So this is very very tempting. I think when we when we end up needing more copper we'll probably go here instead of going to the asteroid belt or to Njord because this if we, this is just going to be a, a build it once and then forget about it. Yes, it's going to be a little bit harder to get the, get the stuff across. There's going to be slightly more of a logistics load on this, but it's going to be a lot more it's going to be a lot simpler to it's going to be it's going to be a build it once and then forget about it type system and those are my favorite. And that brings me on to the researches that we've been doing in the last stream. We did Stronger Explosives 9, and as I was saying last week, I'm not really sure why we did, because it, we don't really use explosives all that much anymore, but, you know, it was there. It took fairly cheap uh, science packs to do, so I guess it's a case of we might as well tick this one off on the way through. We have developed nanomaterial, and that means we can now build... Um, it's, it's, it's a new material we can make stuff out of. It's not particularly useful on its own, but with further research, we can then allow that allow us to make more and exciting things from it. Like the nanomaterial cable, which is an alternative way of making space elevator cable that uses superconductive cable, nanomaterial, and aeroframe poles, as you can see here, instead of the sort of the all of everything that we're using before. So the question is, is this recipe actually cheaper? So instead of using a holmium, an iridium, three beryllium things and some coal to make one, we now use a superconductor cable, which is a holmium thing and a cry a two holmium things and a cryonite thing. So that's, that's kind of three ingredients required there. And a nanomaterial, which is uh, quite a lot of different, lots of different things. And that's going to be, that's going to be difficult to make, but I think going to be very, very valuable to make and uh, aeroframe poles, which is the beryllium, and it makes 20 of them. So I think, yes, because this recipe makes so many, I think it's worth trying to, and we're going to need nanomaterials for other stuff as well. It's worth going to be worth making a lot of nanomaterial and then turning some of that into the, um, in, into the space elevator cable because it will be, it will, because it makes 20 at a time, that will be much, much better and much cheaper. So that's definitely worth doing. Making the nanomaterial also allowed us to start making the, to start researching the high temperature heat exchanger. And so this is the one that where you can use it with the, uh, the beam receivers, you can use it with um, some of the more advanced nuclear style power plants, so antimatter and that sort of thing. So this is a machine that will allow you to produce incredibly hot steam from very, very high power, from very, very hot um, thermal 
pipe things um, and in, in very very efficiently and then it allows you to then also research the high temperature turbine generator which is the counterpoint to it which allows you to then turn that steam into electricity incredibly efficiently and get nearly all of your water back basically it's the, it's the advanced heat exchanger and turbines they're, they're very very good um, but they require material as, as you can see up here they require mat matter science so we've made one of them we then didn't have enough matter science to make the other one so we've done part we've done 23 percent of the research and then stopped because we we ran out of matter science packs we then moved on to targeted zone discovery, as I was saying, for when we were this allowed. This is what allowed us to find the copper. Tristan went out and said, "Yes, we want to find copper planets specifically." So we did four of those. We found four copper planets. I mean, we could probably carry on with it, but to be honest, uh, we found one in the best possible place that isn't in the Kalida system. So I don't think there's any more any point in doing more of those. We researched the advanced tech cards to allow us to start making them because I built the machinery to make them. So we're, we're now that now we've got that it un, it, it's unlocked all of these different things across here that we can start start uh, trying to trying to um, invent, design, build, whatever. Um, we've not done any of them yet. We've done a bit of this one, but we've not really done any of them yet because the supply of the uh, of those advanced tech cards is a little bit slow at the moment. We've researched Naquium processing, which is, I mean, it's, 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 a, it's a step toward, towards getting the deep space stuff, uh, which we're not ready to start on yet because we don't have enough of the uh, all the res other resources yet. So we're, we're not going to go out looking for Naquium until we've got enough of basically everything else. There's quite a bit of quite a bit more work to do there, but we've got we've got that research done, which is, as I say, an important stepping stone towards deep space science and gets us these uh, these Naquium heat pipes, which you know could be useful. It's not that we can make them because we don't have Naquium, but they could. They're they're a nice idea. And we spent our first handful of advanced tech cards on developing a shield, on developing the shield projector. And so this is going to allow us to make our ships go a lot faster, um, at least if we can, if we've got the engine power for it. Because now we can put on, we can put shields on the front of them, and the ships will be protected from um, protected from rocks that come flying in. Now the shield projectors projectors aren't completely um, indestructible, but they do mean that if the lasers miss the odd rock that's coming through here and there, it doesn't really matter too much. The shields will, will, should be able to catch them. We can also use them against biters on the ground. In theory, um, I'm not sure. I'm ne I never have, but it is a, it is a thing that can be done. So I guess we'll uh, we'll we'll see whether we ever actually do that or not. And finally, we've got the advanced rover ports that are part way through their research because, as again, we don't have very many advanced tech cards, so that's got kind of stuck. But eventually, we'll get a few a few more of those made, and we'll be able to carry on with that. So looking at the available researches that we haven't done yet, all of the ones that will give us anything actually useful require advanced tech cards in the case of the advanced pickaxe and mining productivity and work at ro robot speed and laser differences or they require matter science like matter fusion and the high temperature turbine generator and so on. So, so at the moment everything we can research is either stuff we don't want like better flammables and more ro follower, follower robots and that sort of thing or it requires a science pack that we don't have enough of yet. So at the moment our research is, is struggling a little bit. It's a little bit stalled but we'll get over that. We've got the um, we've got the, the uh, systems built up to, to make all the research packs we need. We just need to speed up the uh, the production of all the resources to allow us to make them. So things I'd say things are going quite well but we are a bit short, limited by our resources, so there's some, some further work to be done there. And I think that brings us to the end of the video, so thank you very much for watching as ever. I'll be back tomorrow with a um, with an XCOM 2 stream where we should be going out and attacking more of the uh, more of the plot-based missions. Uh, things are going pretty well, I think, at the moment. So I'm still wondering whether I should increase the difficulty or leave that for a second run where I'll go in with something a bit more heavily modded and maybe a total conversion and go all Star wars or something like that with it. <laughs> uh, we'll be back on Thursday for some more uh, Factorio as well, so we'll be carrying on, with, carrying on with this. I shall try and sort out that horrible mess I've left on Agnea, and uh, we'll all try and get everything running at the, uh, the speed we would like it to be going at. And the videos will be on uh, Saturday and Monday at the end of the week as well, of course. And keep an eye out for other stuff happening. So there'll be a, a supporter video on um, on Wednesday that's going to be covering one of the mods we're using in our space exploration run. And I've got a short queued up for Friday as well. So uh, yeah, lots of stuff to keep an eye out for. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.